Okay, in this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into the concept of independent events. I know we've kind of loosely talked about that in a previous video, but this one we're going to get, uh, like I said, take a deeper dive into it. So two events are said to be independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event occurring. Okay, so how do we represent this mathematically? Well, this is now that we know about conditional probabilities, this is what we do. We're going to take the probability of B given A, and we're going to compare it to the probability of B. If the probability of B given A equals the probability of B, then we say events A and B are independent. <clears throat> so let's take a quick little minute and, and see what that's saying. So remember with our conditional probability, what we're saying is that we have the probability of B, given that we know that A has already occurred. So we have some inside information that A has already happened. Well, if the probability of B occurring, given that we know A has already happened, if that's equal to the probability of B without us even knowing anything about A, that means the occurrence of A had no effect on the uh, likelihood of B. So that's why if the probability of B given A, that conditional probability, if that equals just the probability of B left alone without the condition, then we say the two events are independent. If those probabilities are different than each other, then we say A and B are dependent events. All right, let's dive into a couple of problems here to hopefully clear up that, that definition there. <clears throat> All right, so suppose we conducted a survey and found that 56% of college students live on campus. 62% of students have a campus meal plan and 42% do both. Suppose we met a student while dialing on campus. Um, are the events living on campus and having a meal plan independent? Are they independent? So as we discuss in other videos, I think it's important for us to label our events. That's our first order of business, okay? So I'm going to let event A be that we live on campus and event B that we have a, uh, a meal plan. Let's write those out. So A is that we live on campus. And event B is that we have a meal plan on campus. All right. So remember, we're trying to see if events A and B are independent. And as we know from earlier in this lecture, we know that that is done by comparing the probability of B given A to the probability of B. Okay, the question is, are they equal? If they are equal, then we say the events A and B are independent. If they're not equal, we say the events are dependent. Okay, so let's figure this out. So let's see what we have. Let's write down the information that we know. Okay, so we know that 56% of college students live on campus, right? So what is that? So that is the probability of A. So we know the probability of A is 0.56. I always recommend write out the information that you know. 62% um, of students have a meal plan. So that is the probability of B. The probability a student has a meal plan is 62%, 0.62. And we know that 42% have both, so that's the probability of A and B. Okay, and that's 42%. Well, going back to, once again, a previous lecture, we talked about the conditional probability formula, right? Because we need to figure out what's the probability of B given A. Well, if it turns out that the probability of B given A, you guys recall this formula, is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. All right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to just fill in our information. We have the probability of A and B, which we know is a 0.42. And we divide that by the probability of A, which we know to be a 0.56. So the probability of B given A will be 0.42 divided by 0.56. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our calculator and figure out what this equals.
So we're going to take a 0 0.42 and divide it by a 0 0.56, and we get a 0 0.75. Okay, so for independence, we need to compare that probability of B given A, which we just calculated to be a 0.75, right? I'm borrowing this formula from right here. We take our probability of B given A and we compare it to the probability of B, which we found that to be a 0.62. Well, we can see that those two probabilities are not equal to each other. Therefore, we can conclude that living on campus and having a meal plan are dependent events. Having a meal plan are dependent. So that's what you do, folks. You find the probability, your conditional probability of B given A, you compare it to your probability of B. If they are different, you have dependent events. Um, if they're the same, you have a set of independent events. Let's try one more example. <clears throat> Consider the following table, which represents a breakdown of employees by job type and gender. Okay, so this is a uh, contingency table. We've seen that before when we talked about conditional probabilities in that video. Um, so really quickly, how to read this. The first column tells you the different job types, management, supervision, and production. And then we have a breakdown of those job types by the gender, right? So there's seven males that were in management. There were six females in management. There were eight males in supervision and so on and so forth. All right, are the events being male and having a production job disjoint? So I wanted to bring back this topic of disjoint events. It's often confused with independent events. Remember, disjoint means uh, the two events cannot occur at the same time. That's what it means to be disjoint. Well... Can we have a person that's both male and in production? Certainly we can, right? There's 45 males that are in production. Because they can occur at the same time, we say that the events being male and being in production, they are not disjoint. Okay? All right, but that's a different concept in independence, which we're talking about here next. Next, we're talking about part B. It says, are the events being female and having a supervision job independent of each other? Okay, what's our first step? Label our events. And we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to let event A be the event in which we select a female worker. And we're going to let event B represent the situation where we have a person that's in supervision. Question becomes, are those two events independent? And once again, we're going to compare the probability of B given A. We're going to compare it to the probability of B. All right. So let's get these probabilities. OK, so we need the probability of B given A. So that's the probability that we select a person in a supervision supervisory role, given that they are female. So if you remember when we talked about in the conditional probabilities lecture, think of this as kind of like a fraction where our domain is being restricted. So our given event is that they have to be female. So how many total females do we have? There's 90 females, so that will be our denominator. And out of those 90 females, how many of them are in a supervisory role? There's going to be 12 females that are in a supervisory role. So that's the probability of B given A. All right. Next, let us uh, calculate the probability of, of uh, B. Okay. That's the probability out of everyone, right? Because there's no restriction here out of everyone that we select um, a person that is in a supervisory position. Well, out of everyone means there's a grand total of 150 people, 150 workers. And out of the 150, 
How many of them are in a supervisory role? There's a total of 20 in that supervisory role, okay? All right, so what we need to do now is um, compare those two fractions, see if they're equal. Remember, you know, with fractions, just because they look a little different, they may end up actually being the same. So what you may want to do here is reduce both of them, all right? And so, or another way we could do it is we could simply go to our calculator and say, okay, let's do 12 divided by 90, which gives us 0.133 repeating, right? And then let's also compare that to 20 over 150. And we get the same. Well, why is that? Because, well, if we reduce both of these, let's see, um, 3 goes into both uh, 12 and 90. So we get 4 over 30, which we can reduce that even further to 2 out of 15, right? And then with the um, probability B, we can divide the top and the bottom by 10, and that will give us oh, 2 over 15. So that's why we see that both of those um, are the same. So because the probability of B given A equals the probability of B, we say the events A and B are independent. Okay. All right, folks, I hope that clears up the concept of independence and how we can find that using a uh, mathematical formula. And I'll see you guys in the next video.